Hi, chem students. I want to talk about a concept called the half-life. And the half-life is kind of an easy uh, idea, but sometimes it becomes a computational little problem for people because they don't understand how, the, how to best look at the problem and, and look at what it means uh, because, it, because it is so simple. So let's start by looking at a graph of some reaction. Um, this reaction is going to be just A, breaking apart into products. And we're going to monitor that as time goes on. And we notice it makes this nice little curve for us. So if you take a good look at this, we started at a concentration of 4. And we might ask ourselves the question, how long does it take? So how long does it take for us to get to a concentration of 2? So how long, that's time, to go from 4 molar to 2 molar. And because this is half the concentration, because of that, we're going to call this time the half-life. And on the graph, it's pretty easy to see that we started at 0 right here. That if we take this across, at this point, we are at half our concentration. So this would be T sub 1 half. Where once again, this symbol, T sub 1 half, is a, a, a way of writing half-life. So T sub 1 half is the symbol for half-life. As you see, we can also get another half-life by going from 1 to 2, or 2 to 1, I'm sorry, and that would be going across to right here. Here's where 1 is. Here's the time. This would be another half-life. So this time right here would be another half-life. And for some, for some chemicals, the half-life is the same no matter how much you have. And for other chemicals, it, it depends on how much you start with. And let's see why that's the case. So just to recall, we're going to define the half-life. And this is the key thing. We're going to define the half-life. The half-life is the time it takes to reduce the concentration by half. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up and get us ready for the next little bit. So what people do uh, to create what are called half-life equations is they start with the main idea here that, that whenever we have a particular unimolecular process, something like that we've been talking about A going to products, that we can have these very specific integrated rate laws. So if I was to choose, for example, first order, I would know then that my first order integrated rate law, which tells me how time and concentration progress, is in that form. And so that'll be given to you on the exam. That's the good news. So from there, all we have to do is say, what in the world is the definition of half-life and, 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 and apply it? So the first step is to just say, hey, at the half-life, when t is equal to t sub 1 half, and I substitute my t sub 1 half in right here. You can see that's all I've done is substitute. Instead of it being t, it's now t sub 1 half because I'm saying at the half life. At that point, the concentration I have is equal to half of what I started with. And then I just plug that in. Here's my concentration I had. And now it's become half the initial. So I've just substituted it in. And if you take a good close look at that, the a naughts, the initial concentration of A, they cancel out. So I reduce that now to minus one half on this side, um, <clears throat> or to one to one half. I've also brought the minus sign over. And one of the little things about log that you can do is you can apply this minus, the negative sign, bring it up to the top, and that's then the reciprocal of one half, which becomes the two. And that's one of the reasons why you had to have some logarithmic uh, mathematics before you took this class. Now that we have that, we have a relationship. All we do is rearrange it to solve for t sub 1 half. So when we ask for a half-life, it's always going to be this. t sub 1 half equals and then some stuff. 
What stuff do we have? Well, there's others. We could do this for um, all the orders that we've talked about in class. So here's the thing. They're not going to be given to you. Uh, we're going to be giving you the integrated rate law. This you'll have. So there's two ways you can get to these uh, half-life equations. The best one is to just learn what I did on the example before, which is to create a half-life from the integrated rate law by substituting in what the definition is, then rearranging. But some people just want to memorize it because that's the way they do things. Um, it's not the best way because in, in a year you won't remember any of it and you won't have any clue how to get there without looking it up. So you haven't really created any knowledge in that case. But here are the half-life equations for the zero, first, second, and third order for some uh, substance like A breaking apart into products. I keep using the same example, but that's okay. All right, so let's put this to use into, an equ into a, a problem that you might see on an exam or in the homework, and it's very straightforward. It looks like this. When some substance X decomposes, it, it has a rate constant that's given to you, and then you're asked, what's the half-life of a 0.65 molar sample? And so the first thing to think is, what are, we, what are they asking for? They're asking for a half-life, so they want a time. That's key. Half-life is a time, how long it takes. The second thing is we need to know what order it is to use the correct half-life equation, which we can see are right here. There's these four to choose from. Which one do we use? Well, we're given a clue. We're told that the K, the rate constant, has units of molarity to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. And that right there, are the, that's the units for a second order reaction. So we know that we have, we know it's second order from the units of K. And the second order half-life equation, we can go back up and just take a look at it. Ah, it's one over a, K, X, naught, or A naught. In this case, it's going to be um, X. And we weren't given the equation, so let's just assume that they wrote it in this form. And I will do this. If, if I don't tell you anything different, you can assume that the, that the little balancing stoichiometric coefficient right here is a 1. So if that's the case, then our half-life is equal to 1 over k times the initial amount, which would be x naught. And for this particular problem, our k is 1.23 times 10 to the negative second, molarity to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. And our concentration is 0.65 molar. And all this is in the denominator. If you take a good close look at this, the molarities cancel out. Now we have 1 over 1 over seconds. And the answer to this is, so this answer is 125 seconds. There you go. That's a little introduction to the half-life. Uh, I suggest you go read about it in your textbook right now and see if that makes any more sense. And also, in, uh, if your instructor, I know that I gave out some notes on this as well, read up on it there. Thanks.